Phil and Jalen, 2013 MBA preview. This is where the fans need to realize this ranking belongs to Bill Simmons and Clairvoyant Bill. It's our rankings. This is the I Bill and Jalen MBA preview. I had zero to do it's Bill with Jaylen the rankings MBA of this preview. team. You, you actually have a team ranked ahead of LeBron James? I don't know what you were thinking. Four-time MVP, not number one? <sighs> That's not giving the people what they want. Let's see what their fan base mindset is. I mean, but well, we also know you three kings came down here to win championships. Not one, championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three, not four, not five, <laughs> not six, not seven. Oh. All right, so they got two. People took that press conference too literal. He meant win a few championships, but for the people that's like, not six, not seven, they only signed a five-year contract. I'm so glad he did it, because I, I know I got endless amounts of comedy from it in my column. <laughs> Thank you, LeBron James. That was great. Uh, well, they've got two. If they win this year, that's three. Then they become a three-peat team. Russell Celtics did that. Mikan's Lakers. Jordan's Bulls. Shaq and Kobe's Lakers. Yes. A three-peat is no joke. Unfortunately for me, I played against the Bulls in 98 their second three P in the East Conference. The finals. hardest series they had of all those six titles. And I played against the Lakers in 2000, the beginning of their three P. Yep. So in competing against teams going for a three P, one at the start and one at the end, the team that we faced at the end, the Bulls, you talked a lot about them potentially running out of gas. And they almost did in that series. Look at the minutes played, in particular for LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. That's a lot of mileage. I think Miami's the best team in the NBA. And unlike you, I'm not going to pick a team in front of them. But it's so tough to 3 P under those circumstances. Trying to win that third is really tough. And, the, you know, the part that people forget about Miami, they played 313 games the last three years. So they played 246 regular season games. They played 47 playoff games. And they played 18 finals games. And those finals games are like two games in one each time. No doubt. On your body. The physical toll on LeBron, they got really lucky with injuries, Jalen. Wade tweaked his knee last year. It was 60% of what he normally is, but was still able to play and give him something. The year before, Bosch got hurt, missed some playoff games, came back, was compromised, but still gave him something. They've never had to deal with anything like Patrick Beverly knocking out Russell, West Russell Westbrook out of the playoffs you know, or Kevin McHale breaking his foot. They've had really good luck these last three years. Time out, we right. 20. My worst case for Miami is that we don't go to prime 112 this year in the finals and I can't get 10 poor lobster. <laughs> That's my worst case. And the second worst case is we didn't make it to KODs last time. I gotta find a way to do that this time. Well, so, Crockett and Tubbs, people thought they were invincible on Miami Vice. They're the stars of the show. Nobody's going to shoot either of these guys. But watch what happens. Oh, no. I didn't like this decision to run back the Phil Collins song, by the way. It was an iconic Miami Vice moment. Uh-oh. Oh, no, Sonny. So when you least expect it, you can get taken out That's by the gunshot. Very nice. Right? And that, you know, Miami's had a lot of luck these last three years with injuries. People don't think injuries are luck, or the lack of injuries are luck, but that's a form of luck. If you, you have LeBron James, who you've been able to basically get 313 games out of in a three-year span. And the Olympics, anything, you're not counting that. And the Olympics. Dude's got a lot of miles on him, and that's the reason. Um, I, I'm gonna get into the why, why we didn't make them number one, but let's look at what they did last summer, because it wasn't a lot. <laughs> they didn't acquire Greg. Chris Anderson, they re-signed. So that's why he's in there. And then they got Odin Beasley, Beasley's police officer. Uh, losing Siobhan Funchess Wade, I think, was, was important. I know you can't laugh at that, but get, getting her legal problems uh, out of their hair. So uh, has him, I guess, is the starter. I don't know. Maybe they'll go small ball again and put LeBron at power forward and start Battier. Battier is already talking about this is probably his last year. I personally don't think Beasley's going to give them anything. Um, I thought it was worth the gamble for them. It was. But I think they need they need perimeter guys who can 
shoot threes and spread the floor, and I don't know if he can do that. Beasley has an opportunity, and this is always a certain crossword for a player, Bill. There's a lot of times a huge drop-off between the first pick and the second pick. We've talked about that before. In Beasley's case, it was almost like Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf mm. for Derrick Rose and him. So it's all past him having to live up to the number two hype, just like it should be past Greg Olden to live up to the number one hype. But here's the thing I'm watching for. Going to Miami, that was the only team that not only could have used the Chris Anderson as effective as they did, but I think a locker room and a team, forget basketball and championships, can save your life. And he has a relationship with Spolstra how from you, when they crossed paths the last totally. time. Totally. How you just relate to situations off the floor and the mature, maturation process. This is a chance for Michael Beasley, the man that just so happens to be a basketball player to resurrect himself. If he blows this situation... It's over. He'll be out of the league. Do you know what, in college, Michael Beasley was like 27 and 13? I do. Him and Durant basically had the same stats in college that one year. Um, I think a guy... I, look, we don't know what he does off the court, but clearly um, he's not the same guy physically. And he either needs to get his life together and figure out a whole different scenario for the other 20 hours of the day when he's not playing basketball, or he's going to be, that's it. This is the last chance for him. He's one of those players, and I say this all of the time. Of course you want to be a champion. Of course you want to be a Hall of Famer. The next best compliment is to be a veteran. And right now... You want to be a keep getting those checks guy. Absolutely. On Jalen's keep getting those checks team. No doubt. Yeah. You go up to Marcus Camby and you ask him, yeah. Hey, I really haven't seen you play three straight games in the last 10 years. And Marcus like, here are my checks. But you look at how much money he's made yeah, you know who over knows his career. The teller at his bank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Canby, how you hey, doing? Hey, Mr. Canby. <laughs> Good to see you again. Here's Zach Lowe's sneaky big question about Miami. Can the champs get a boost? And this goes back to um, the 313 games. Now, I don't... I, I, if you look at the history of three-peats... The 98 Bulls were a team that really struggled during the regular season and won probably 12 more games. I think Steve Kerr said Jordan, just because he is a maniac and so competitive, they won 12 more games than they should have. But that was really a 49-win team, and Jordan dragged it to 60 wins. They didn't get the one seed. The 2002 Lakers, Sacramento got the one seed that year. You go back to uh, the 89 Lakers that were trying to get uh, the three-peat that year. They ended up getting swept in the finals by the Pistons. 15-2. Uh, and two. Portland came on that year. I think it's really tough to stay on top. And I, I think if Miami's smart, which is the reason I made them the number two team, you use this regular season, you just want to be one of the top three seeds. You're not burning your guys out this year. No, definitely. I think they're fine going 53 and 29. You will not see another 27-game win streak from this team. No, and also for the Heat, what you continue to watch is if Bosch is giving you buckets going towards the rim. Mm or further from the basket drifting because they're going to need that second player to mix it up. He was making you mad in the playoffs when we were at those games because he was basically doing what you do when you play pickup now. Yeah. He was 20 feet from the basket, and that was his game. Correct. Get near the rim, Chris Bosh. You're 6'11". And, and he's so talented at yeah. attacking the rim, going both ways, dunking over the top. I think he's going to do that more. And watch his rebounds. I expect Chris Bosh to be a 10-plus rebounder this year. That's going to help them also. If I had done the sneaky big question, if I was on Zach Lowe's show and he gave me a question, my sneaky big question would have been, Dwayne Wade, LeBron, and Chris Bosh, these are contract years for all three of these guys. And if you're Chris Bosh, you can, you know, you have a player option for next year and the year after. So you can grab that $40 million, but you could also go into free agency this year you could exercise the player option. Now either Miami pays you and you're banking even more, or you're just going to free agency. You sign with the Lakers. Chris Bosh could be in the Lakers next year, making $20 million. Well, whatever I'm doing if I'm Chris Bosh, I'm definitely getting paid. Right. For sure. He's getting paid, and I think for him to get paid, he has to have a big season. And that is your best case for Miami, is a Chris Bosh best in season and four-season season. But th it's open for him to have a great season because Wade probably distinctly takes a step back this year and puts Chris Bosh in a position See, to be the second leading scorer. you don't think he goes the scorer. other way? 
I, I thought when Durant called him out about stop saying you're the best two guard, it's James Harden's time. I thought that might get in place. Supposedly Wade's in shape too. I think Wade cares about one thing. The playoffs and the championships. Do you see he's in better shape this year? He doesn't care nothing about being one of the league leaders in scoring. Mm. He's not going to care nothing about playing 35 minutes a night. He's going to have his nights when Melo and Durant and Paul George and Derrick Rose, these players come to town, Chris Paul, he's going to want to turn he's it on. He's going to step up. So you're the on-off switch for Dwayne Wade. <laughs> the other, you know, 70 games. Yeah. It's going to be like, LeBron, get us on out of here. Let's try to get a 15-point lead and ice our knees in the, in late in so the So you're third. saying if, if you're paying to see Dwayne Wade in Charlotte, maybe you're not getting his A game? No, not at all. He's going to shoot, shoot 10 jumpers, maybe get two rebounds, and he's done? If he come on and goes for four for four, he may give y'all 35. He come on and go one for four. That's it. He's out. Can we see uh, what the triangle said about Dwayne Wade? <laughs> Another year of hating Dwayne Wade, the best <laughs> villain in basketball. There's enough Dwayne Wade cheap shots for us to make a Dwayne Wade <laughs> cheap shot montage. Let's look at this. Uh-oh. Oh. What was that? What was that? Why did he do that? He want to get physical. <laughs> this really wasn't very nice. Yeah, well. Well, the opposite is do what Jason Terry did. Oh, here's when he broke Rondo's elbow. Yeah, he broke Rondo's elbow right there. And somehow he didn't get suspended. I'm still bitter. Yeah, Rondo showed terrific courage and still competing. Look at his it, elbow. Ow! Ow! All right, here's another one. Look at that. He hit that guy in the family jewels. Yeah, you got to protect the family jewels. That's not legal. Well, he That's gave, a cheap shot. Well, he gave him a uh, one-two. He got the knee, and then he got the jewels. My son tried to do that to me when we were wrestling the other day, and <laughs> I slapped the hell out of him. I know you did. <laughs> oh, wait. What's this one? Jimmy Superfly oh. Snooker. The flying elbow. Dwayne Wade's a professional wrestler. But you know why he didn't get a call? He was clearly acting. <laughs> oh, wait. Here's another one. There's more Dwayne Wade cheap shots? Oh, he kicked him. What is he, Bruce Lee? Dwayne Wade should be in jail. <laughs> this is Clairvoyant Bill's easiest one of the entire series. Wow. Our MVP is going to be LeBron James again. It's going to be his fifth in six years, which has never been done ever. Ever. The it's only guys that have four are Michael Russell. Four and five years was done by and Michael and Russell and not Kareem did four and six. But those are the only guys that have four or more. So only Bird, Russell, and Wood have won three straight MVPs. Nobody has ever won five in six years. And I think he cares about this stuff. He should. And, and I think he's motivated. I think he wants the three-peat because he understands Kobe had a three-peat, Jordan had a three-peat. Back in the day, Russell had a three-peat. I, I think he's thinking about this stuff a little bit. It's not the only reason he's playing, but I just think he's now at the point, if you, if you listen to him in the preseason, He's talking a lot about Jordan, his relationship with Jordan, um, who would win versus him and Jordan. It's the first time he's allowed himself to kind of enter that conversation. And once you start doing that, you got to back it up, and I think he's going to. One of the things I think we're going to see from LeBron James this year is a mean streak. When you're going for your three-peat mm. and you're a four-time MVP, everybody's giving you their best shot, literally. Yep. The teams, the fans. Playoff game every night. Every night. And what's going to happen is, and this is where players like me will come in during my career. Not a Hall of Famer. I'm not an all-star. I'm nowhere as good as LeBron James. But I, I'm a professional. I can challenge you. And what's going to end up happening is a lot of different players are going to try to challenge LeBron James physically, mentally, emotionally, to try to take him out of his game. And also, a sense of a sense of jealousy in a respectful way, mm. which means... You have all of the things I want. They also have Brooklyn, Chicago. Physical, physical. Indiana. Physical. Then you have the Clippers. Those two games will be playoff games. Houston, that is, that's a playoff game. All of a sudden, you got 20 playoff games in your schedule, not to mention all the other times you got to turn it on because you're in Sacramento and Boogie Cousins is playing hard. <laughs> right. You know? And I think... Uh, in a lot of ways, this could be his greatest season. I remember, I thought Bird's greatest season was 87. It was actually the year he didn't win the MVP. But Mikhail was still recovering from the broken foot. Bill Walton wasn't playing. The league had gotten a lot better. 
And Burgess, night after night for 100 games, just put the team on his back. And LeBron, we've seen him do it in Cleveland. He never totally had to do it for this Miami team. I could see this being one of his best statistical seasons. We acknowledge Carmelo Anthony and Kevin Durant when they score because they're terrific scorers. We overlook the stat sheet and look down, and LeBron still has as many points basically as they do on a nightly basis. Oh, yeah. He could either score over 35 and or average a triple-double. He could go either way. He could average 17, 11, and 11, I think, if he devoted the energy to doing that as opposed to scoring 25 or 30 a game. Our old friend and co-worker, Magic Johnson, didn't think LeBron could ever average a triple-double because he couldn't get the assists, which I thought was interesting. He just said it's really hard to get to 10 assists. But I think he could get 30 11 and 8 really comfortably if he wanted it. Goldsberry's graphic follows up on LeBron James. Wow. <laughs> A lot of red. The three-point shooting is, is been, was the biggest difference for him last year. He was in the 40s for most of the year. Um, around the basket, obviously, he's by far the best. Goldsberry had the stat that he created where you could figure out all the shots on the floor, what the average is for those shots, and then how much a player exceeds that average with the points they scored. And to nobody's surprise, LeBron James scored more points than he should have given the shots that he took. And when you're scoring almost 75% on anything around the basket, that's gonna help. But I think his low post play can get even better. That's something where he's just gotta commit to it. It's and maybe, all... maybe he saves it for big games and playoffs, but I think he's devastated down there. It hurts to play down low. It's a pain in the ass. You get an elbow shoved in your back. You got to fight for position. You got to move around, jostle body. Like, it's it's work. Uh-oh. Get them, people! What they want. Ah. Well, I think this is our champagne and campaign champion. Yes. Miami. Yeah, which is probably why it's a bad idea for Michael Beasley to play there, but. Back-to-back uh, <laughs> -back championships. I got a chance to work down there the last two years and see the team celebrate, be in the same place at the same time with my guy Jawan, champagne and campaign and heat championship. I've actually lived in the Miami era, area, so I know my way around from live or from the Ritz at Coconut Grove where I spent time. That's one of those places where you pull a Casper, which we used to call it in college. Like, where's Jalen? Yeah. Jalen was just there. What happened to him? Yeah. What's the bathroom? <laughs> He's gone. You love South Beach. Lobster you... Tempura Prime 112, Joe's Crab Shack, Live at Fontaine Blue. Great looking uh, people. I mean, I'm Miami. out there. I'm hanging with Lil Wayne. I'm hanging with Drake. Yeah, you somehow navigated the whole Little Wayne feuds with a lot of different people, and somehow you you get along with all the people that I all do. Would feud. I do. You're like the Switzerland of that side of the universe. Absolutely. Yeah, I've always admired how you did that. Well, we were thinking about champagning and campaigning, and we thought, let's look at some footage of Miami people champagning and campaigning. Some of the famous <laughs> Miami people. This is LeBron after game seven. You, I gotta tell you a secret. Were you at this party? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and so at, later in that video, it's him, Dwayne Wade, and Drake, and they're just hanging out. Pat Riley was there. Yeah. A lot of Heat officials you were, were there. You were with Mo Peterson. Actually, I was with Jawan Howard. Oh, Jawan, your your old buddy. <laughs> Who else can we see uh, partying in Miami? Oh, it's Tubbs at a strip joint. <laughs> Tubbs, stand up and do a twirl for us. Somebody's watching me. Yeah! yeah. Tubbs! <laughs> That was probably the first, that might have been the first strip joint scene in the history of television right there. And the shot of the big ass booty what? too. Do the damn thing, Tubbs. Tubbs got laid on that show. I mean, that he by all so types classy. too. Tony! Oh, here's Montana. Tony Montana. Let's see Tony's champagne and The campaign. first dude I heard say Pelican and make it sound cool. Pelican. That's Michelle Pfeiffer who, yeah. maybe the worst dancer of all time. Tony, the only thing that could make your dancing worse is if you put a big cigar in your mouth right now. Could you do that for us? 
Come on, Tony. Ankle. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> he also plays basketball in that movie, and it's he really. He does. And then uh, finally, a lot of people don't know, uh, Dan Levitard was in Cruising. Yeah, DLHQ. Dan Levitard. Get him, Dan. That's cruising. our guy. <laughs> this is Pacino. <laughs> Look at Pacino in this. Dan, blame him, Dan. Pacino was really <laughs> committed to this scene, too. I'm torn on the 24-second shot clock. The guy who loves history, Bill, the guy who respects and loves NBA history, would think it would be pretty neat to have a three-peat. The guy who, as a young teen, was not only rooting for your Celtics, but jeering the Lakers as they went through the tunnel past your seat. Yelling that at, was you. Yelling at my future TV partner, Magic <laughs> Johnson. Uh, as somebody who loves and respects NBA history, I think it would be kind of cool to be there if LeBron won three straight titles and five titles in six years. But then you go back to your buddy, Je uh, Justin Bieber. <laughs> you remember that way back when? I do. Your pal. And then he became, he, he, then this happened. <laughs> And when I think about Miami winning another title, in my head I keep coming back to the fans leaving early, game six, I come back to this picture, that $500 hat, and I'm torn, Jalen. The Miami Heat are a terrific basketball team. I can't say who's gonna derail them because I do think they're the number one team, Bill, not the number two. But it's just so tough to 3 P. I I think it will be another team's turn, potentially, to win the Eastern Conference. You know what, we're gonna skip the 24-second uh, shot clock because we got to interview LeBron James right after game seven, and we asked him about how close he came last year, and here's what he said. I gotta ask you, because you couldn't really talk about it after game six. You guys escaped the jaws of death right, in that right. game. And you have to say all the right things afterwards. Now you've, you've won the series. What game six? Did you think you were done? Like, walk us through like the last right. 28 seconds there. I'm gonna tell you one thing, uh, Bill. You need a you need a little bit of luck yeah. to win the NBA championship, yeah. I, I, and, and that's right. exactly what we had. We had a little bit of luck. We had a couple missed free throws. We hit a couple shots. We had a couple offensive rebounds, and we got Jesus on our side. <laughs> He's the for you need a little bit of luck to win an NBA championship. Derek Fisher point whatever over the shoulder against San Antonio. Those plays happen. At some point with Miami, the luck is not going to be there in one of these playoff series. And I don't know if it's going to happen this year or not, but that's the curse of the three-peat. It's really tough to win three in a row. And in each of their series this past playoff, they actually trailed. There was a time yeah, against right. the Pacers. They were down 3-2 to the yep, Celtics. Yep, they were down 3-2 to the Celtics. They were down 2-1 to the Pacers. Yep. They were down 3-2 to Dallas and never came back. 3-2 to Dallas. So these past It's a team that we talked about on the show all year. It's a team that had an on-off switch. And that's dangerous, too, because uh, there's going to be a point where you flick the switch on and, it's, and it doesn't go on. Um, but for the meantime, LeBron James and Dan Levitard are going to keep dancing because I'm a little a disappointed time. in our Miami coverage. What do you mean? What do you, what do you think was missing? The two live crew is missing. You see that flag? Where's Luke Skywalker? <laughs> brother Marquis. Marquis, your brother. You know why we didn't include two live crew? Because every Don't song had so many <laughs> F-bombs. I, I went through some of their songs. I was like, oh, can't use that one. Uh, can't use that one either. It wasn't exactly a family band. <laughs> Did they have a song stickers. called Don't Get Fired? No, but they came with the explicit stickers, parental guidance. It was a big part of their... Yeah. Big part of their success and a big part of the reason why they didn't make our Miami preview. Uh, DLHQ! When we return, our last one, the number one team, the Chicago Bulls. Who could have guessed Jalen would rank them number one? We will be back.